here is Sean O'Malley, the number one Bantamweight contender and perhaps a future world champion. There were a lot of us that believed in this man early on. And I think those that didn't are now getting on board that bandwagon, getting off the crowd. Well, I'll tell you this much, John. I never thought he would be the number one contender to sue. But he showed that it's not just confidence. He's not just spewing words. He has the actions to back up those words. That's why you saw him in that competitive fight with Peorion. That's why you have seen him compete and compete well against the best fighters in the world. That's why you see him so close to a championship opportunity. But there's one last step, and that's getting a win tonight. And obviously that is easier said than done, but Sean O'Malley has this intricate training camp built entirely around him, and there is no denying his status right now as one of the very best 135-pound fighters in the world. Well, if you want to talk about a division being the glamour division in this modern era, maybe it's lightweight, and this is the man they are all chasing, the undisputed king at 155 pounds. He's the champion of the world, the lightweight champion, a very difficult belt to capture. This is one of those titles that when you start, it seems like the journey is so long, it's so daunting, because those champions are tremendous. This guy knew from day one that one day he would hold that championship belt. He got there and he has been defending it valiantly. He's a tremendous champion and he loves the opportunity to once again prove that he's the best. And it is interesting to look back at some of his early days in the UFC compared to this version. Night and day, we'll see how it goes for the champion here tonight. Our tail of the tape for this lightweight championship fight. We send it inside the octagon. We find Bruce Buff. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. <laughs> Championship of the world. If we see first, fighting out of the blue corner, presenting the challenger, Sugar Sean O'Malley. And now introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner, presenting the reigning, defending, undisputed UFC lightweight champion of the world, Eli. Herbert Dean's in the building. He's the third man in the octagon tonight. So, of course, we're getting another look at Sean O'Malley here tonight. And one thing that has defined his UFC run thus far, he has dictated the pace. He has led the dance against his prior UFC victims. Let's see if O'Malley can stay with that and stick to that here tonight. Doing a real nice job with these leg kicks, trying to slow his opponent down and largely succeeding. Oh, my goodness, these boys are going at it. O'Malley gets caught by the inside leg kick. A few more, and that'll leave him off. Nice defense to block that punch. Nice takedown defense there, and perhaps that one stuff actually might affect the live betting line. His opponent in a world of trouble. Such a sneaky head kick. He did not recognize it was coming high. And now he's got a first bag. Massive left hand. Oh my goodness, what a right hand. Ooh, uppercut lands. And able to avoid the punch there. Nice slip by Sean O'Malley. Great body kick there. 
right, so we have got a full-on brawl to start this fight. Any concern that these guys might burn themselves out? Oh, they're going to exhaust themselves. So we may as well enjoy it right now, because come the third round, regardless of the weight class, they're going to look like two tired heavyweights in the middle of the octagon. All right, good start for the Sugar Show, Sean O'Malley, realizing particular success with that left hand. Yeah, he's got a great left hand. He's so long for the weight that he pops the jab and he just darts it with the left hand. And you see it on full display right now. Nice. Just over three minutes now to go in round one. And both fighters exchange in the pocket. followed by a left there by O'Malley. Oh! He's got to start going down. Big left to the right for O'Malley. Oh! Slips the punch. Got to the clinch, controls the posture, and lands some big knees from in close. And now the jab gets through. Oh, man, that's hard to watch. Another leg kick lands flush. And if you're the opponent at this point in time, you got to check something. What are you doing? You got to adjust. You got to be doing something different because to this point, what you're doing is not working. Get close. Fight chest to chest. Maybe relax. Oh, his leg kick rounds his opponent. Left it a little bit, trying to stay upright. But, man, that changed the complexion of this fight. John, he's hurt. He's hurt really badly by that one big leg kick. Oh, nice right hand. Oh! Huge kick to the head. And he comes through with a big knee. Oh! Huge left. Oh! oh he's hurt bad. He's hurt bad, John. He's got to press him. He's got to go chase that finish down now. Oh! Swing and a miss. All right, he's got the striking going, another connection there, and that shot actually cut him, or so it appears. Yeah, you could tell that if he kept landing at the rate that he would, it would start to get damage on his opponent. Right now, you see him get his first cut. Oh, nice. Oh! Back and forth we go. These two guys are trading huge shots. Just out of range with the big right hand. That one landed, yep. O'Malley's oh, eye now closing up. Let's go, hit it. Oh, effective strike there from the clinch by Topuria. Well, eventually you know he's going to turn this defense into offense, but he's certainly doing a nice job on the defensive end this way. They talk about the feeling out process. He's getting his opponent's timing. Now he's blocking everything. It's Ben Palmer as we go forward. Oh, huge hook. 15 seconds to go. Topuria's cheek looks like it's cut. Yes, it is starting to bleed a little bit now. Nice head kick lane. And now Leather being thrown on both sides. Round two is next. All right, so the round is over, and you see the cut man not wasting any time as the fighter makes his way back to the stool. The cut man will try to shut that cut on the bridge of his nose and prevent it from becoming a factor here moving forward. Well, I'm not sure the extent to which he has recovered, but we do see the end of the round. DC, talk us through the replay. Well, he's a tough guy. He's going to make it to the stool. He's going to survive unless you put him completely out of there. Unfortunately, he's in there with a guy that does have that ability. You ready to fight? Ready. Second Good. round underway. All right, next round is now underway. Hopefully the action continues at a high level. Pretty good first five minutes. Pretty good first five minutes. Both of them can really pick it up. Let's see who decides they're going to lead the dance as we go forward. Oh, oh he's wobbled now. That's a good combination. And he's looking for that left. It's not there. 
Well, we may have the best cut men and women in the business, but I'm not sure they're going to do much with that. It continues to widen with every passing stroke. And you're fighting a great fighter. It's hard to deal with the damage of the cut while dealing with the level of the fighter in front of you. Right now, you have got to do something different to try and change the way that this fight is playing out. Well, this is absolutely the hurt business. It's hard to see which party is more injured. I think both fighters have been really effective with their strikes. I'm not sure how he stayed up there. I mean, when you've been hit with a shot like that, to stay standing and show and talk for your toughness. All right, well, he rocked him pretty good, but didn't sort of smell blood in the water, and now his opponent's back. Blood's in the water. You gotta go and get it. You gotta go find the finish. You cannot let him off the hook like that because now he will be motivated to try to go and hurt you as you hurt him. All right, so he's landed a few semi uppercuts already, DC. You gotta think he goes back to it. I am almost certain he's gonna go and try to find another one of those. But expect him to really set down and try to make one really count to try to end this fight. Another strike upstairs, and for his opponent, that is certainly not going to help matters when it comes to the swelling. He can't miss, Jay. And when you saw the swelling initially, you knew that he needed to change something. He still has not changed that. And wow. Oh, a perfect shot there, DC. And one more of those, he might be out. I mean, the fight is going to be over. I can't believe he's still standing. That shot landed perfect. There it is. Now he's running off. Setting up the arm bar. Ooh, looks like it might be locked in. Once he gets you going, he's got so many ways to finish arm bars. Oh, Bale's on the submission now. All right, so he lands again, just like we saw in the last round, realizing a lot of success with his Muay Thai game. You know, why change it? It's working, and it's working from the very start of the fight. The moment this fight started, you saw the advantage that we predicted was there. He started to take advantage of it early, and now he's continuing to bring up over the top. This fight's gonna be over next season. What a great way of mixing up his attacks. He didn't stay the course. He mixed it up. He went high with his opponent, but he was going low, and now he's got him hurt very badly. Oh, nice job by him to get the need of the target there, using his length exceptionally well tonight. Man, that left side is getting beat up now. Look at the redness there. Back and forth we go. 90 seconds now to go in the round. Oh, he's in trouble. Well, he continues to do a nice job here defensively, protecting his head, raising the guard, and really frustrating the offensive fighter a little bit. Lesson one in boxing class, hands up, chin down. So a much different approach from him here in round two. Took him a while to find the range, get in his striking rhythm. He has found it here, and as a result, has really picked up the pace in round two. O'Malley's taking aim at that cut right now, and hard to blame him, right? Might as well continue to target that. Oh, the How's his opponent still standing? I mean, I have no idea. This fight is supposed to be over. And it might not be over now, but it's gonna be over very soon. It's another knee there, DC. It doesn't always pay to be the taller fighter. In this instance, it most certainly did. Oh, well timed and placed overhand by O'Malley. All right, so how about this? The BJJ fighter just continues to land that will on the feet, not necessarily the way you drew it up today, Chief. No, I, you know, watch these two fights in preparation. Topuria's lower jaw does not look good. I don't think it's broken, but starting to show some obvious signs of swell. Oh, nice defense on the single leg attempt there. Big knee there. There's the horn, plenty of action to digest in that round. So there is the horn, standing ovation from this capacity crowd, near knockouts by both fighters. Probably the best round we've seen thus far this year. Oh man, this is the best round of fighting that I have seen for a very long time. Why did the bell have to stop? Let's just go 10 minutes straight. Pride rules. 
All right, so there's the end of the round, and the tide has officially turned. A huge head strike to stun his opponent. We'll see which corner can adjust here moving forward. I mean, they've got to be celebrating. They've got to be happy. Everything's working. But the other side has to be concerned. They have to figure something out, make some sort of adjustment to try to change the tide Ready, of this fight. Ready. Ready. All right, here we go with this third round of this championship fight. All right, so after one of the more entertaining rounds in recent UFC history, our next round is upon us. Man, those guys both took some serious damage in that previous round. They both took some damage, but they both gave it. They both gave it as well as they took it. Let's go. Big strike lands. Big strike lands. Now he looks to try to chase down that fitness. Well, at this point, DC, I'm not sure if he's just biding his time or just trying to get some extra reps, but go finish that. It seems like the guy's playing with his crew. You know, he's having a good time out there. Everything's working. He's in the zone. It feels like at any moment he can end the night of his opponent. But he seems to be having fun. And hey, to each his own, I guess, I'd be rushing out of that octagon. Yeah, you don't play with him. No. Topuria's torso, specifically that right side, has absorbed a lot of damage tonight. And here comes the purple, the black, and blue. A definite bruise starting to form on that right side. Keep your hands up. Use your footwork now. It's okay. Use your footwork. Nice side there, by the Looking to land the right just out of range. strike there as he continues to attack that cut. Cut man's gonna have some work to do if we get to this duel between rounds. But that's why we got the best in the business. We got the best cut men in the business, and they are going to need him right now because this cut is getting worse, and it's only gonna continue to get worse because he has got a killer in front of him. Oh! He's out! Shot on Ali with a huge knockout tonight. Well, we now go inside the octagon where Bruce Buffer has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Deans called a stop to this contest at two minutes, one second of the third round. Declaring the winner by knockout and new UFC lightweight champion of the world, Sugar Shaw. Well, remember the name Sugar Sean O'Malley who gets his hand raised inside the octagon yet again here tonight. He had some doubters coming into this matchup, but again, Sugar Sean O'Malley finds a way to mute the naysayers. He has set himself up for a massive fight coming up next.